I believe it was a free and fair election and that you lost. Well, then you're How a fool. However, then you're a fool. maybe I am a fool. Republican primary voters deserve two things. The truth, which they're not getting from Joe Biden or Donald Trump, and results on issues they care about. Donald Trump had a chance to do that as president. He didn't. Why should we give him another? I'm not looking at what's going to help myself or not. I'm looking at speaking the truth. And I do think he was an excellent president as judged by results. But I'm going to deliver something that he did not national unity. This is the latest thing involving President Biden, where he just said stuff which makes no sense, actually is pretty inappropriate. It gets personal, and I don't want to be personal about this. And I think it's kind of cheap for me to go there. I think I have a chance of becoming the Democratic nominee because my numbers are better at beating Republicans than him. So what would you do right now in Ukraine if you were the president? Putin uses the N-word. I call it the N-word. He uses the N-word, the nuclear word, mm. all the time. That's a no-no. You're not supposed to do that. He uses it on a daily basis. And everybody's so afraid, so mm. afraid, so afraid. And as they're afraid, he uses it more and more. That's why he's doing the That's kind right. of things he's, he's doing. Praying off the he's feet. doing them because he thinks nobody's going to ever attack us mm. because they're all stupid and they're afraid to talk I about totally it. I totally agree with you. Okay? So what would you and do about instead it? of... Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. A little complicated. Oh, sorry. Instead of, you know, kowtowing, instead of Biden saying, oh, he's got nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. He keeps saying he's got nuclear We have better weapons. That we have the greatest submarine power mm -hmm. in history. So what would you say and do? I would say we have far more than you do, far, far more powerful than you, and you can't use that word ever again. You cannot use the nuclear word mm. ever again. Harry is whipped. Do you mm. know the expression whipped? I'm familiar with the phrase. I won't use the full expression. <laughs> but Harry is whipped like no person I think I've ever seen. Good I'm job. not a fan of Megan. Yeah. I'm not a fan. And I wasn't right from the beginning. Same I think to poor you. Harry is being led around by his nose. Okay. You think it's going to end? I do. I've been a very good predictor, as you know. I've predicted almost <laughs> everything. It'll end, and it'll end bad. And I wonder if Harry's going to go back on his hands and knees and say, please, you know, I, I think Harry has been led down a path. If you were the know. Queen, is it at the stage now, would you remove their royal title? I would. The only thing I disagree with the Queen on, probably one of the only things ever, is that I think she should have said, if that's your choice, fine. But you no longer have titles, you no longer... And frankly, mm. don't come around. He has been so disrespectful to the country and I think he's an embarrassment. The latest poll says if the 2024 election was held tomorrow, you would beat Joe Biden by six points and Kamala Harris by 11 points. In other words, you would be re-elected president of the United States. So are you going to run again? Well, you know, for reasons of campaign finance and everything, I'm not allowed to say. But let me just say this. I think a lot of people are going to be very happy. So you are going to run. I love our country. Our country is going to hell. I think a lot of people are going to be very happy. So you're going to run? I'm not going to say that, but I think people are going to be happy. Put another thing to you. It's, I've, I've watched this whole debate, Ray, and you've been completely unflagging in your refusal to accept defeat. And you know why, though? You know why? Because if our country doesn't have fair and free elections, mm. and if our country doesn't have borders, mm. we don't have a country. Okay. We have crooked, corrupt elections. But here's what I would say to and you. And I've proven it. Here's what I would say to you. I believe it was a free and fair election and that you lost. You don't that, really believe that's that. That's my belief. Right. Well, then you're How, a fool. However, then you're a fool. maybe I am a fool. Maybe I'm the fool in, in this conversation. About and you're it, a fool and you haven't studied it. Gavin, great to see you. Good to be back. Uh, how's it going? How are you feeling about running for president? I feel great. You know, I've been in it for five weeks. Um, I feel really good. I feel like, you know, what I'm saying to people is starting to break through in terms of what we're seeing in the polling. You know, we're at 9% now in New Hampshire, only four points behind Governor DeSantis. And uh, for five weeks, that's pretty good. So we're feeling good about the way it's going. And I will tell you that um, I'm enjoying myself, and I think it comes through. The big elephant in the room is not here, um, Donald Trump, way ahead in the polls at the moment for the Republican nomination. How are you going to knock him out? Directly. There's no way to do this like playing bumper pool, Pierce. And I think that's the biggest uh, mistake that my adversaries in this race are making. They think somehow if they, you know, maybe kind of in a sideways looking way, they say something negative about Trump that people will get it and then they'll go to them. Look, there's one lane to the Republican nomination, in my opinion, and Donald Trump's at the head of that lane. And if you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. 
and you got to go right through them. And how do you, do, how do, you do that whilst not alienating the not insignificant number of people in his MAGA base who blindly support Trump, who don't even care he's been indicted on criminal charges? They believe it's all a stitch up because he's told them that. How do you manage to knock him out and wipe him out of the race and keep those people coming with you, which you need to win a general election? Well, look, first off, I think that the group that you'd have to be worried about alienating is relatively small compared to the entire Republican primary. And then in the general election, if you do knock him out, look, those folks are going to look at the choice between me and Joe Biden. And even if they feel some resentment towards me from knocking out Donald Trump, they don't want 82-year-old Joe Biden, let alone 86-year-old Joe Biden, in the White House. So, and, and I think when they listen to me about the issues, Pierce, you know, I want to send the National Guard to the border to interdict fentanyl. I'll actually build the wall as opposed to the 47 miles that Donald Trump built in four years. That's 12 miles a year. He needs like 40 years as president <laughs> to be able to finish the entire wall. Um, he said he was going to repeal and replace Obamacare. Didn't get it done. Said he was going to balance the budget. He added $6 trillion to the debt. So Republican primary voters deserve two things. The truth, which they're not getting from Joe Biden or Donald Trump, and results on issues they care about. Donald Trump had a chance to do that as president. He didn't. Why should we give him another? Obviously, when it started, not many people knew much about you other than your entrepreneurial stuff. Now, since the last debate, uh, you've become incredibly well-known, very well talked about, and a lot of uh, unfriendly fire is coming your way. So my first question is, how are you handling being now in the proper spotlight of being a presidential candidate? I'm fine with it. And I do think, Pierce, that's part of the process. We jumped into this race early on, going in eyes wide open, knowing that politics is a dirty sport. It's filled with falsehoods. You may have seen a report over the weekend that actually one of the other candidates' large super PACs was taking credit to their donors for the donors, for the attacks that have been manufactured against me. That's okay. I can handle it. And to tell you the truth, if I'm asking the people of this country to ask me to represent the U.S., across the table from Xi Jinping. I better be able to sit across the table from other candidates or from left-wing media or anybody else. And so we're doing just fine with it. I'm focused on what we want to achieve for this country, shutting down the administrative state, keeping us out of World War III, declaring independence from China, growing the economy, reviving national pride. These are my actual focus areas, not some side attacks that can I really could care less for. OK, look, you've, you've certainly been so far, I would argue, the most pro-Trump of the other candidates. But that raises the question, if he's so great, even to the extent you would pardon him of any crimes he may can be convicted of, why would you run against him? Why not just let Donald Trump run again and potentially win again, and maybe you get a, a good job out of it? In other words, if you keep talking him up, how does that help you? So the answer is, I'm not looking at what's going to help myself or not. I'm looking at speaking the truth. And I do think he was an excellent president, as judged by results. But I'm going to deliver something that he did not. National unity. Uniting this country is a top objective for me. I'm 38 years old. I am the youngest person ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. And peers, we're reaching the next generation in droves. We're reviving national pride amongst young Americans. 40% of my 100,000-plus donors are first-time-ever donors to the Republican Party in any form. That is unheard of. That number is normally 2%. And so, yes, on 90% of policy areas, I do agree with Donald Trump, and I respect his accomplishments. But there's more to a president than just being a policy book in a binder. Part of this is how we reunite this nation. I think I'll be best positioned to accomplish that. And I look forward to working with Donald Trump when I hope he's my advisor Frankly, my mentor in my first year in office, that much I will take. But that's how I think this is going to play out. I want to play you a clip. This is President Biden last week uh, ending a speech uh, about gun violence by completely randomly saying this. It's the least consequential part of this whole meeting for you, I promise. <laughs> All right. God save the Queen, man. OK, well, two things. The Queen died 10 months ago. We don't, she's not our queen. Yeah. Our monarch, yes, yeah, not your queen, and, and our <coughs> queen died 10 months ago. This is the latest thing involving President Biden, where he just said stuff which makes no sense, actually is pretty inappropriate, to some people quite offensive. He seems to have forgotten our queen died last year. Um, and it goes to his mental capability. 
It's a big issue. I mean, it can't be ignored, I don't think. How do you feel about this? I, you know, I think it's for the individual voter to decide. It gets personal, and I don't want to be personal about this. I'm running against the president on issues. Uh, there are many people in his camp who would argue, yes, he makes gaffes like this, but when it comes to his decision-making on issues, he's just fine. Every individual has to decide on that, and I think it's kind of cheap for me to go there. How concerned are you, never mind the race, but how concerned are you when you see President Biden now in public, the sheer volume of missteps, both verbal and physical? Does it concern you as an American that the president seems to be... No, I, I don't really think that I have any uh, additional wisdom to contribute to that debate. I, I think that uh, I don't... I haven't seen President Biden in a couple of years. And I don't know, you know, I see, I saw him trip on the stage, but, you know, anybody could, as you know, mm. anybody can trip on a stage. And, uh, and so I don't really know what his condition is. There are worrying, um, you know, videos and stuff. But, uh, but do I, you sense that he may not actually r run in 2024 I, I when it comes know. to it? And is that why you think you actually have a real chance of potentially becoming the Democrat nominee. I think I have a chance of becoming the Democratic nominee because my numbers are better at beating Republicans than him. Mm. So, and I think that's what the Democrats. Should the party, party make him stand aside for you? Well, I... You know, that's... Not, first of all, that's not going to happen. Oh, But doesn't uh, that have to happen to let you... No, him? no. I mean, I, I have to win some primaries. And you think you can actually beat him yeah, in the primaries? I think I can beat him in the primaries. I mean, it'd be incredible. I mean, pretty much unprecedented if you do that, right, to an incumbent president. It's... Uh, I, I, think, I think Reagan did that against uh, Gerald Ford. Right. Oh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's unusual. But, you know, my father ran against an incumbent president, and he would have won. Um, and, uh, you know, my uncle Teddy ran against incumbent President Carter and, and lost. And do you actually he won, believe... He won, uh, he won something like 37 states. Do you actually time. believe that in 2024, when we get to December, January, you will be the person I, on inauguration day addressing the American people? OK, I'm going to be very uh, objective about this, but I'm telling you that... We have a few seconds left. If I had to put money and bet on any candidate, I would put it on me.